What is up, people? It's Will back once again for another Fight Card Prediction. We're going to be breaking down UFC 206 from Toronto in Canada as Max Holloway faces off against Anthony Showtime Pettis for, I can't believe I'm saying this, the interim UFC featherweight championship. I think it's just a joke that they've put a belt in this on this um, on this fight. They should have just made it a five-round number one contender fight, but so be it. I've just made my UFC Albany picks. They're out now. If you want to go and check that out, you can come follow me on Twitter, Will Martin Seven MMA. You can play me in DraftKings at Bilber85. You can follow me, follow and trail my bets on Copper Tech at uh, Will Martin MMA. And please, 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 if you can support the guys down below me, um, I put them in the description uh, description box there. Uh, they're the guys I listen to, watch their products, uh, listen to their podcasts, their interviews. Just try to find out those little bits that may help me put my head towards a pick or so on. Um, but overall for this card, I think UFC 205 in New York lost a couple of fights and it's actually made UFC 206, those fighters coming on this card, a lot, lot better. And I say, to be honest with you, I really like the card. I think the main card is top, top fights. I uh, really like the main card. Jordan Mean versus ML, uh, ML Meek. I don't know whether that should be in the main card, but... Um, overall there's solid fights throughout the card and I'm looking forward to kind of breaking down and giving you my picks and hopefully keeping my uh, nice little run of picks going so we're going to start off in the flyweight division we're going to start off with uh, Zach Makovsky against Dustin Ortiz here first of all my pick's going to be Zach Makovsky in this one and the reasons why is um, don't like the fact that Dustin Ortiz has moved out of Rufus Sport I don't think that's a, a good move I think he's moved closer to home in Tennessee which is which is fine, but I thought we saw a, definitely a not a sharp Dustin Ortiz in his last fight against Jose Formiga. I know it was down in Brazil. I know Formiga is one of the best guys in the sport out there, but um, he just didn't look as sharp as he what he usually does. And I'm a fan of Dustin Ortiz. I just think that uh, the change isn't good for him. I think Rufus Sport is a top, top, top camp. He probably gets better sparring, um, better training, better coaching. And I just don't like the fact that he's left that to go. Maybe it's a money situation, a family situation. And if that's the case, then fair enough. But we've got Zach Makovsky who, is, who fights out of um, Toronto. He, 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 he does his training camps here at TriStar, I should say. And... Um, I just like him this fight. I think that it's going to. I think that Ortiz is the harder hitter. I think he's the better boxer. But I think that Zapmakovsky is the craftier fighter who has got very good timing for takedowns. He averages more takedowns in a fight than what Dustin Ortiz does, and he goes for them more than what Dustin Ortiz does. And I just think he's going to close closely win rounds. I don't think there's going to be a hell of a lot in it, but I think that Zapmakovsky is going to win the fight um, with those takedowns. I like him just to kind of win rounds very 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 close with it with his um grappling i mean his last two losses were very very close losses joseph benavides was definitely a loss in the record i thought he gave john dodson a really good fight and that could have went either way and then before that he beat tim elliott who gave demetrius johnson last night a great fight so this guy's a really good fighter before that you see formiga who's probably the, could be the next guy in line for a title show i just think that zap makovsky is going to just time those takedowns really well and work for them and get them down there. Whether he can hold Ortiz down there is another thing altogether. But um, I feel confident picking Zach Makovsky. I'm going to pick him via decision. Lightweight division of Jason Sago against Hustam Kabilov. Uh, close fight, but I only see one guy really winning it. I don't see... I was watching Jason Sago fights earlier on today. Um, and I was looking, how can he win this fight against Hustam Kabilov? Uh, he does have the chance of submissions. He's a really good submission um, submission guy. That he, he's very um, um, always kind of aware of where his the kind of limbs and everything are, and he's very 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 good at just um, moving himself around to, to, to really look and f try and find a submission. And he has some decent grappling. He showed that in the Leandro Silva fight that um, that was enough to win him the fight. It was a very close one, but I thought he did enough to win that fight. But he's against someone here on Hustam Kabilov, who I just think is the better all-around grappler. And he's the heavier guy. And once he gets you down, I don't think that Sa I think I don't I just can't see Sago find a submission, maybe not getting off his back. 
Um, Habilov's been he's had a very good 2016 with three wins on his um, resume over um, Norman Park, Chris Wade, and Leandro Silva. All fights over here in Europe, uh, in Germany, in London, and in Holland. I just think that Hustam Habilov. He's a dangerous guy in the feet as well because he's heavy-handed and he hits very, very hard. And I think he could catch Sago and that could kind of lead into him putting his back against the cage where Habilov is really just going to grind on him, take him down. I think once he gets him down there, he's going to put his weight on him and just pretty much dominate him down there. Um, I was going a little bit back and forth on this when I first heard the match. I thought Sago has a chance. The more I watch on Habilov, the more confident I become. So Habilov via decision in that one. John McDessie against Lando Venata here. Um, kind of like the Dustin Ortiz fight here. I just can't pick John, McD- uh, John McDessie. Not that, just for the fact that he doesn't train at TriStar anymore and he really hasn't got any decent sparring partners out there. Um, leaving something that elite in Montreal. Um, I can't believe I said Zach Makovsky comes out of Toronto and saying that. that. Um, but Montreal, um, to go, he kind of works at his own camp now. And um, he'll just not have the quality of sparring partners that he would have at somewhere like TriStar. And I can definitely see um, this guy kind of less and less becoming a UFC caliber fighter in every fight. He does have really decent um, striking. But I thought he should have told someone like Mehdi Baghdad in that last fight. And in all honesty, he could have lost that fight. I thought it was very, very close. If Baghdad had a better fight IQ, I think he could have definitely beat him there. Losses to Yancy Medeiros and Donald Cerrone. I just I think that Lando Manata, we've seen this UFC debut. This guy's got really crisp uh, striking, um, good movement, good footwork. He was just in there against a guy in Tony Ferguson. He came in in short notice there, he took the fight, got himself into the UFC, gave a great account of himself, dropped Tony Ferguson. I'm looking forward to seeing what this guy offers more in the UFC here. Um, I just don't like the fact that McDessie's not a TriStar anymore. I think he's deteriorating as a fighter. I think that Vanat is very aggressive. He's going to find ways to get inside that tricky striking on McDessie there and, and land the shots to, to really put McDessie in trouble. I think he could stop McDessie in this one. Um... I think I'm going to go for an early third round TKO for Lando Venata here. If not, a pretty convincing decision, I think, for Venata. Mitch Gagnon faces off against Matthew Lopez in the UFC bantamweight division. Matthew Lopez getting another tough fight here after he had Rani Yaya in his UFC debut, which I thought that was a really tough introduction to the UFC bantamweight division. But to be fair, there's not many easy fights and there's not many easy fighters to face in that division. But... This is a matchup I actually like for Matthew Lopez. I like the fact that he's um, he's moved to the bigger camp there. I think he's been at King's MMA with Benil Darius, and he's been training a lot with him in, in his new gym there. It's kind of like an affiliate gym of King's MMA, but he does go between between the both of them. Training his jiu-jitsu with Benil, who I think is vastly underrated in that, and has great skills down there. Um, getting his striking better with Master Rafael Cordero, it is only going to help you down the line. So he's against someone here, Mitch Gagnon. We haven't seen him in a close to probably two years. There's some fighters on here we haven't seen in a long time. And um, last loss to Henan Barrow, of course. With his last two wins against guys against um, Tim Gorman and Roman Salazar, not what you call top names in that division. Gagnon is a very game fighter, so kind of well all, all around a decent fighter, decent grappling Decent striking. Um, cardio wanes a little bit as the fight goes on, but that's to be expected if you if you kind of got a high output, which he, he can have if he puts his foot down. He, he does have a good output of strikes and um, also looks for his, his, his grappling as well and his takedowns. But I actually like Matthew Lopez in this one. I'm not going to come off him. I was very high on him coming into the UFC on his debut. Um, thought he did all right against Yaya, but Yaya was just too experienced, too good knew what to do and uh, dominate them to get the finish there. Uh, Lopez, the bigger guy here, the, the the bigger reach, the younger fighter. I just think the only thing that Gagnon really has, Gagnon might be the better fighter. It's hard. I'm struggling this one, but I'm not off the Matthew Lopez train yet. I think he's got something to offer and um, 
I think he shows it in this fight and he gets a, a very close victory over Mitch Gagnon in his home, home country, which is another thing which might sway the judges a little bit. You never know. But I'm going to go Matthew Lopez. I'm going to go a very close split decision in that one. Um, and I might put a bet on Matthew Lopez because I am feeling pretty confident that he can pull this off against Gagnon here. But we will see come fight time. Women's strawweight division, Valerie Letourneau against Vivian Pereira. Going to go with Valerie Letourneau here. Um, Pereira is a very, very small 115, uh, 115 fighter. I mean, she's like f literally scraping five foot. She'd be a perfect at and weight if I ever brought that division in. She's 12-0, and 0, I think, with like 75% of her fights being finishes. I saw this girl about a year, probably a year and a half ago in the XFS, uh, XFC preliminary card I remember watching her there thinking now nah, she'd be alright she'd maybe be good in Invicta in that and weight division if they ever kind of get that started back up again um, but she's got the call up here to face Valley Turner after Botello fell out so um, big fight for Valley Turner she's coming off really hard fights with Ioanni and Jacek where she got busted up I thought she gave a good account of herself in all honesty uh, then she went up to the flyweight division to face Joanne Calderwood and Joanne Calderwood just really put a beat down on um, Valerie Letourneau there but what does Val really offer she's a very tough um, fighter who always just looks to, to to she's just a hard fighter to face as Val Letourneau for the simple fact that she's been around a long time she's faced a lot of a um, lot of really top quality fighters like Adelia and JJ Calderwood she has the 7 inch reach advantage here she had, in fact, I think it's eight. She's got the seven inch height advantage here. And I think her output, she, she'll she beat her with her output all day long. I think she's the bigger hitter as well. I think Valoturno could really, um, this is the kind of do or die fight for her. If she doesn't win this fight, there's no way she should be in the UFC. There's probably no way she should really be fighting. I'm going to go Valoturno. It's hard that you don't really see many finishes in the UFC women's fights. I'm going to go decision. And, um, yeah, I'm going to pick Letourneau to, to win that pretty convincingly, in all honesty. Moving on, we have Olivia Aubin Mercier against Drew Dober. Really like Aubin Mercier in this fight. I think that um, although Drew Dober has the striking advantage, um, definitely, I think that Mercier is a smarter fighter. Um, never... I think his output could be something that he what he could he could really work on a little bit. Throw more leg kicks. I think the guy really has heavy heavy leg kicks when he uses them. Heavy body kicks as well. And once it goes to the ground, the guy is very creative, and he's got a, a really good choke choke game. And if he, he gets an opportunity to get that, which I think he could get it against Drew Dober, just for the simple fact that I don't think Dober has the best fight IQ, and I don't think that. I think he's a decent fighter, don't get me wrong. I just don't think he is anything really special. I mean, I know he's won his last two fights. Pretty convincing KO of... Um, oh, who was it? Jason Gonzalez, who's fighting in um, early next year in Phoenix. But... Um, or Denver, I can't remember now. It's quite late, so... Um, just think that Auburn Mercy is the smarter, better fighter. I think that on the ground, he can definitely finish... Um, Drew Dober, he's been known to, once he's on his back, to really kind of sometimes settle for that, and that's not really something you should do against someone against Aubin Mercier. Um, I just think that if he puts his strikes together to put Dober against the cage, he's going to get a takedown and he's going to win rounds through that. So I'm going to go Aubin Mercier to win via decision. Uh, great fight. Love this fight. One of my favourite fights in the card. Nikita Krylov against Misha Sarkinov. I've been going back and forward in this fight um, since I probably started thinking of it in the middle of the week and watching a little bit in it uh, of both guys. Big fight for Misha Sarkinov here. If he beats someone like Krylov, he's going to jump himself. I think Krylov is like, it's not like number eight in the, the light heavyweight division. So that's a little bit weird because I think Krylov maybe deserves to be around about there, but um, that's like a clear, clear division of your top three, four fighters. Then it goes Bader. Um, and so on, maybe Manoa, OSP, and then you probably come into your Krylovs, who's ready to probably jump into that next phase there. Um, really been going back and forth on this. I like Krylovs' um, aggressiveness in the feet. 
come forward, look to put it on you. Look, he looks to finish, and the guy finishes fights um, predominantly. Did that last time out against Ed Herman. Beautiful high kick at UFC 201, and really just beat him up with a really nice footwork as well. For a big guy, decent footwork, and a nice little bit of speed. I know he was against Ed Herman, and that's not really saying much. But uh, really nice finish from at 201. Getting, I think that's a really tough fight. I think it's a really close fight. And this is something... Sarkinov is a decent striker. I thought before he came into the UFC, he was decent there. I think he's got a really good top game. And if he gets on top of Krylov here, he could put a really... He could put a beating on him. I think that Sarkinov can find ways to... Get this to the ground and win rounds. I've seen it, I think it was against Corey Donovan. Donovan put him on his back uh, and looked to kind of win that. He was winning, I think he, he was having the vast majority of that round, but then came through and uh, finished Donovan in round number one. Really interesting fight and say I'm very 50-50, not confident in my pick that much because I do believe both guys can win. But my pick's going to be Nikita Krylov. I think he's just... I think over the three rounds, I think he's got the better gas tank as well, to be uh, to be honest with you. Interesting if this goes to the ground and Sakhanov has got the top top position here. I'm going to go and Nikita Krylov via a very close decision here, but would not be surprised if Misha won this fight. But my pick, official pick, is going to be Krylov decision. Well, the weight division of Jordan Mayen against the debut in Emil Weber-Meek. If you don't know who Emil Meek is, he's the guy who... Just put a beat down on Husamar Palharis back in Venator, which was always good to see because Palharis is a bit of a nutcase and we like to see people like that who purposely, I think, hurt people, get a little bit of a beat down himself there. And uh, against the returning Jordan Main, who's been away for nearly two years, I'm a little bit back and forth in this one as well because I do believe in ring rust, I really do. And there is fighters this year that have shown that it really is a load of BS, like your Dominic Cruz and so on and so on. But um, I like Jordan Mayen just, but not much. I think if he can survive the first round and just kind of look after himself, look after his body and not get hit with big shots that Meek can throw, um, he can grind out this fight. And I think as, over, as the round kind of goes further on, he has a more... A better chance to really finish this fight. I think this is a, a fight that um, it's a pretty decent welcome back fight for him. Meek is a tough guy. I'm not downplaying him in this as well because if you beat Paul Harris, you're beating a fairly decent fight. I, I do think he is on a decline, but my pick's going to be Jordan Main. I think he can actually stop Meek late on in this fight, so I'm going to go a TQ victory round number three for Jordan Main. Middleweight division, we have Tim Kennedy against Kelvin Gastelum. Another very close fight where I've been going back and forward in this. Um, Kelvin Gastelum, what can you say? The guy just cannot make weight. It's just um, a big kind of welterweight. It's, it's tough to get down there for him. And this is probably the division he should be for the next load of fights because I think it's fairly obvious he can't make that weight consistently down there. And that just messes up a whole lot of fights a few days before the fights as well. And it's just it's um, not on really. So... But this is a fight I think he can win for the simple fact I went on about ring rust with Jordan Main in that. I think that he is it's two and a half, nearly three years that Tim Kennedy's been out. And this is a tough fight to come back to because Kelvin Gastelum is a really tough guy to to face. So we've seen like he, he, even though he missed weight drastically against Tyrone Woodley, he, he nearly won that fight. I thought it was very, very close. I, I thought Woodley maybe just done enough. But, um, I mean, the one thing that is just kind of put me off picking Kelvin Gastelum in this one, and I do want to pick him because I think he can beat Tim Kennedy here. I think that Tim Kennedy's strength and his grappling is just going to find its way into this fight, and I see this being very close. I've, I've struggled to pick between these two. I've been going back and forward. I was picking Kelvin. I'm going to go on my pick, which I've decided in the last couple of hours. I'm going to go for um, Tim Kennedy via split decision. I can see Gastelum winning, wanting to come out after that Cerrone fight fell through and prove himself here. I'll probably be picking Kelvin Gastelum and Toutmaster, which I'm sitting third on now and looking to 
kind of bring in the big money towards the end of the year here. My official pick is going to be Tim Kennedy via uh, a split decision. Very, very close though. Featherweight division, I'm really jacked for this fight. Cub Swanson against the Korean Superboy Do Ho Choi. This is the kind of step up that I think that Do Ho Choi is needing. And I think it's I actually think it's a really tough fight for um Cub Swanson here. And but I also think it's a tough fight for Doho Choi because he's never faced someone with the experience. I know he fought Tiago Tavares, who has a lot of experience. Not against the top top guys. Cub Swanson has faced a lot of the tough guy uh, top guys, and his last two recent losses: Max Holloway, Frank Edgar, two of your top guys in that featherweight division. So, what can Doho Choi do? See an accuracy, vicious hand speed, vicious power with that hand speed, and just I mean that finishing sequence against Thiago Tavares was just beautiful to watch. I mean this guy, he's just a kid. It's where he looks like a kid. He looks like a 12 to 14 year old kid, but the guy is just a straight um, masochist in there, and he just puts a beating on you. Once he gets that flu fluidity of his striking going, he's really tough to to stop, and he keeps it. He keeps pouring it on, and he just he's got really unwavering power for that division that we've seen so far. But he is facing a guy against Cub Swanson here. He's probably seen it all. But he is at the top end of his career. And he, is he on that kind of decline a little bit? I think he could be. But, um, yeah, I'm going to pick Doho Choi here. I think it's just that, for me, I just feel it's a smarter pick. But Cub Swanson, I think, is plus 210 I seen earlier on. So if you're looking for an underdog to bet in this card, I don't think Cub Swanson is a bad bad fighter to, to throw your money on I really don't, I think it, this fight could be close or it could be a complete blowout for maybe either side as well but my pick's going to be Doho Choi TKO round number 2, I just think the accuracy is going to be too much and um, he stops Cub Swanson so second round TKO for the Korean Superboy a Coleman event, Donald Cowboy Cerrone against Matt Brown Really like this fight for Donald Cerrone. I like, I just like Donald Cerrone at welterweight until somebody comes in and shows me that Donald Cerrone shouldn't be in this division. I'm going to keep picking him um, until he probably gets the higher echelon guys, like your top, your core top five guys, which he has lost in the past. Your Dos Anjos, um, your Pettis, so on, so on. Your Nate Diaz guys. I mean, and that finish, that finish of Rick Story is just one of the best finishing sequence. I think we've probably ever seen in the sport, especially this year. Um, quick start, that's what he has to do here. He needs to come out quick like Jake Ellenberger did on Matt Brown and just get him quick because you can take Matt Brown out. Both guys, I think, are very susceptible to the body. Matt Brown showed that in that fight. He got hit once and he buckled. Um, and Donald Cerrone in the past have shown that to Anthony Pettis, but that was at 155. I do think he could take a better shot here. I see this fight as being either very dominant for Donald Cerrone or it being a back and forward war between the guys where that's just like a typical Matt Brown fight where he brings it like an Eric Silva fight. Like Donald Cerrone in this one, I think even if it goes to the ground, he's got a huge advantage. And I think that Cerrone, he'll, he'll come out to strike. I think you can see him mixing in takedowns in this one. I think he could submit him as well. But um, I see Matt Brown, you can get Matt Brown and you can TKO Matt Brown. So I'm going to go... Just all around, I see Donald Cerrone bossing this fight. So I'm going to go Cerrone. I'm actually going to go a round one TKO there. I think a body shot, a leg kick um, to the liver is just going to buckle him and he's going to put him down again. So Cerrone for the win there. <clears throat> and the main event of the night, we have Max Blessed Holloway against Anthony Showtime Pettis. Uh For that silly interim bell as well, which is just a joke. Um... Great fight though, phenomenal fight. I really, when I seen this fight get put together, I was like, this is the kind of fights that I look forward to, that I want to watch week in week out. Two high quality mixed martial artists going at it. Both very talented strikers. I mean, the Max Holloway since that loss to Conor McGregor has just blitzed everyone, and um, every fight he looks amazing. Just I mean, you can't you can't fault the kid. Um, 
great chin, great striking. Um, really underrated. I think he's underrated on the ground as well. Very, very good submissions down there. I think we're going to see that the more his career goes on and he goes maybe moves up to 155 and so on and so on. Kid's still growing. Um, but the guy's been on a tear and just, I think that, personally I think this fight should have been for the title because Aldo's just messing around saying he's retiring, he's going to throw the bill, this, that. Wins over Ricardo Lamas, Jeremy Stevens, Charles Oliveira, Cobb Swanson, Cole Miller, Kira Corasani. I mean, he's last, taking out Swanson, Oliveira, um, Stevens and Lamas in those last four fights, that says that this guy is legit top quality in this division and he shows it with his technique, shows it with his skill, he shows it with his work, shows it with his output. He's just the new breed fighter coming through and he's just a, a Brit and he's, he's only 25 and he's been around for so long in the UFC. Um, facing off against Anthony Showtime Pettis here and you guys, if you've watched these videos for long enough, you know that I am, Anthony Pettis is up there in my one or two, maybe your top three fighters for me. He is one of my favourite fighters and um, really happy that he made the drop to 145. I thought it was needed and he got a, a much needed victory over Charles Oliveira. Came out very strong in round number one. You could see that the weight cut really took out of him after that and um, probably Charles Oliveira with a little bit better fight IQ possibly was going to win that fight but Anthony Pettis showed that underrated jiu-jitsu that he, he's got and um, pulled that fight out in the third round and submitted Charles Oliveira and that's, not many guys do that, I know Lamas has went on to do it, but he was, in that first round, he was piecing Oliveira up, body kicks, really hard, I thought he could have got him out of there, if he, I know that um, Oliveira flopped to his back a little bit after he got hit with a body shot, and he never really wanted to go in and engage in there, just because Oliveira is so dangerous down there, I thought he could have finished it then, he looks great, I think this, it's a huge weight cut for this, um, this week coming here, if he can, ace that and hit 145 clean he's had nutrition i think in beside him and he, he looks ready to go he, i think he looks physically he looks good but there has been a lot of things outside the cage i mean his cars and his driveway got burned something something went down i don't know if somebody torched him and on top of that he's got max holloway looking at the other side of the cage cage here but anthony pettis is never going to have a better chance to become a two-time ufc champion no matter if it's a stupid interim belt or what um, I want to pick Anthony Pettis. I do think he has a chance, but you cannot pick against the talent. I don't think you can pick against Max Holloway right now. I would pick Max Holloway against Josie Aldo. Uh, I'd probably pick him against a host of other people as well, maybe a Frankie Edgar. I'm going to pick Max Holloway. I think it's going to be a close fight, but I just think that Max Holloway is just going to be... I think he's just the fighter running up at the minute. He's going to be too clean. I think he's going to get his shots off. And Pettis, I think, it later on is going to wear down a little bit. And Holloway is decisively going to win rounds. So I'm going to go maybe a 49-46 victory for Max Holloway over Anthony Pettis to become the new interim UFC featherweight champion. So that's my picks for UFC 206, guys. Please, please, please like, comment, uh, like, comment and subscribe to my channel. I'm close to 600. Let's get me there before the end of 2016. I'll be back for UFC on Fox from Sacramento, California. Uriah Faber's last fight... Paul Craig's UFC debut um, from Scotland here. Looking forward to that. Um, Paige Van Zandt against Michelle Watson, which I think is going to be a great fight. Um, come follow me on Twitter, Will Martin's uh, MMA. Uh, DraftKings, Bilber85. You can follow my bets on Carper Tech. And please follow and support all the guys down below me there. They do great jobs. See you all soon. Take care.